My brother-in-law, Leonard, died by suicide on September 20th, 2016. And on December 17th, 2016, my husband, Lindsay, also died by suicide after a very lengthy battle with clinical depression and bipolar disorder. And it was a very trying, difficult time. But I felt that at this point in time, my voice needed to be heard. As a first responder, um today, this past five, 10 years, probably 30 to 40% of what we respond to is directly related to mental health. Our area has been you know, uh, inundated with uh, mental health crises. Uh, there had been a sense of the urgency in our community created. Um, and our service, our mental health and addiction service had become very crisis driven. We had, were losing uh, people in the community at an unprecedented rate. Over a 16 month period, we had lost 14 people to suicide in several of our small, close knit communities. The public very loudly said, we need change. We can't access the service. Something needs to happen. So we knew we had a problem. We knew we had a serious problem. So the mayor, Mayor Rex Matthews, uh, called CEO, Mr. Diamond of, of Eastern Health. And in no time, uh, Mr. Mr. Diamond had staff, senior staff and uh, vice president out to meet with, uh, with Mayor Matthews and discuss the concerns and the problems. I think the biggest difference in the approach to change this time was that the ideas about what the change would be, how it would happen, what the goal was and what was needed came directly from the people involved. So people in the community, service providers such as myself, got a chance to speak out and say what we thought was needed and how that would look. Instead of the ideas coming from top down, it actually came bottom up. I said, I want to be involved. I want to make a change. I want my husband's death not to be in vain. And I want him to have a voice that he could never have in his own lifetime. We heard frustration. We heard loss, uh, we heard a little bit of anger, but what happened was that we actually listened. And it's only in listening that the change can really start to happen, which is what we did uh, when we opened our doors and said, you can walk in at any time that you need a service. The community can challenge some of our perceptions, some of our fears, some of our resistance, and we're able to then start co-creating something uh, in a different way. So you work together, and the first team that solves the puzzle wins the prize. We really need to provide opportunities for people to safely um, consider alternate ways of thinking or viewing the world. So sometimes that happens through conversation between community or health and their different perspectives. Other times we can use different activities, um, different learning opportunities, different games that help people to start considering maybe there's another way that I can view the world. Maybe there's another way that I can understand my work. We were a part of the process that got us to this point. We were very much involved in the problem solving that got us here. And we were encouraged to think outside the box. And we actually took it a step further and we got rid of that box. And we created a brand new service that I feel is the Cadillac service of mental health and addictions. Thankfully, uh, this past year now, things have quietened down a lot, and uh, we're hopefully we're over that hump, and uh, you know our mental health is starting to stabilize here in this area. Uh, for us as paramedics, we've uh, certainly seen a big, uh, a big uh, increase in the amount of help that we can get. Um, I think the awareness alone uh, has certainly helped us tremendously. Uh, the nursing staff at the Doctor Respective Health Center. Uh, you know, they certainly recognize when we have a difficult call and they got no problem calling us aside and saying, you know, Derek, do you need to have a little chat? That's the, that's the important thing is that it doesn't always have to be the same method that we all use, but that we all got a way to mm -hmm. decompress or de-stress mm -hmm. or find relaxation and peace yes. in our lives. Totally positive. I mean, the, the, the difference is, is, uh, is unbelievable, really, to be honest with you. Like, I mean, I mean, is, is, uh, is it all over? No, no. But uh, the, uh, where we've gone from 2016 to 2019, 
It's fantastic, really, and we're very, very pleased. I like seeing that people now are more willingly open to talk about their mental health. They come to our facilities and our physicians now can ask them about their physical health as to why they came, but they'll also say, how's your mental health today? And now our patients will actually respond. They won't hide the mental health and keep that stigma there. They'll actually let it go and actually discuss openly how they're feeling mentally. Let's just stop what we're doing for a second and repeat after me, okay? <clears throat> I am enough. I am enough. I am lovable. I am lovable. I am safe. I am safe. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am worthy. I am worthy. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am peaceful. I am peaceful. I am calm. We need to ensure that we have people trained and ready to go out and support. Uh, these communities and these individuals and healthcare providers in really making um, a difference in primary health care and mental health and addictions in our province. I mean this was a change that was uh, spearheaded by community. Uh, it was come up, you know, the community came up with the solution and the community is still sustaining it uh, in working with us in Eastern Health to keep, you know, everything going. Uh, it is absolutely exciting for sure and something we can hang our hat on to say it started here.